Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I would like to talk about calculation groups right from scratch. I have spoken about calculation groups to solve some or the other problems in another videos in the past, but we have not really explicitly spoken about getting started with calculation groups. In this particular video, I'll take you through four different parts of calculation groups. First, I'll talk about what and why of calculation groups. Then I'll talk about an example of calculation groups, show you calculation groups in action. We'll also talk about something called as calculation group precedence. What is that? And we'll also talk about sideways recursion in calculation groups. A whole lot of jargons, but I'll try to make it easy. Let's get started. All right, let's just get started with the what and the why of calculation groups. Now think of calculation groups as like the placeholder calculations that you can apply to multiple measures at scale. Now, if you are able to create like a placeholder calculation that in that particular calculation, you can put any measure that you have in Power BI and through a calculation group, you'll be able to reduce the number of measures that you create in the model. I'm going to give you an example for that, but that's what is the what and the why of calculation groups. At least that's how calculations group got started the ability to reduce the number of measures in a Power BI report. That's how you know people started using calculation groups. But over a period of time, people have taken the calculation groups utility to the next level and found out brilliant applications of calculation groups. To lay our first foot in calculation groups, we're going to keep it very, very simple, but yet very meaningful. Let's take an example of how would you set up a calculation group and why would you set up a calculation group practically with some data in Power BI. All right, I'm in Power BI and that's where I have a ridiculously simple data model. We have a simple sales table that is linked to the products table and that is also linked to our calendar table, which is my date table through a standard one to many relationship. Now I have built a very simple visual, which is where I have the year and the month from the calendar table against which there is a simple total sales calculation, which is nothing but the sum of the units into price like you have seen it in other videos as well. Now, Imagine for an instance that I'm trying to create a couple of time intelligence calculations for total sales, something like I would be, I would like to find out what is my sales for last year. And I would also want to find out what is the YTD of the sales number for which I have to create two additional calculations. So I'll maybe just go right click and I'll say to new measure. I'm going to create a new measure for sales YTD. And I'm just going to write maybe something like a total YTD function, which is where I'll pull down my total sales calculation and I'll say something like a calendar date. I'll close the bracket and press enter. Now this measure, I'm going to pull that into my pivot table and show it right here. Then I would go ahead and create another calculation for sales last year, right? Which is through a same period last year. The purpose of this is not to show you how do you create these measures. I'm sure you would know about that, but the purpose is that to demonstrate the use of calculation group. Now, once, we have created um, two calculations, one for sales by today and the other one for sales for last year, then maybe something changes and we create another pivot table. And in that we display, let's say commission, which is another calculation or measure that I have written. Now for commission also, I then have to create the same two measures, which is commission by today and commission for last year. Then I end up creating two more measures for commission by today and commission last year. Now, in this scenario, if I have, let's say 15 or 20 different measures, which are mutually exclusive, I will then create two measures for each measure to be able to calculate by today and the last year number for that. In that scenario, I'll be duplicating a lot of calculations, which is just polluting my model. What I can do is I can set up a calculation group in the calculation group. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a dummy calculation for YTD, something like this. I'm going to say that, let me just give you an idea about it. So where is my sales YTD? Uh, instead of actually specifying that I would like to do the YTD for total sales, I would like to say that, Hey, I would like to do the YTD for whatever calculation, and whatever calculation is there in the pivot table, please do the YTD for that, right? That's a placeholder calculation and that can be done using a calculation group. Now calculation groups are only possible in tabular editor. I suggest that you download that. I'm going to leave a link to download tabular editor too. And in case you're interested in the paid version of tabular editor, you can also go ahead and install tabular editor three. I'm going to be working with calculation groups with tabular editor three, but calculation groups are possible in the second tabular editor version or the third one, 
they are just possible. But three is more convenient to work with in case you would like to buy that. I suggest that you buy that as well. So let's just jump over to tabular editor. I've already opened that and start to create calculation groups, which are nothing but placeholder calculations, which is going to contain YTD and the measure for last year, which is going to reduce the number of measures that I have in the report. All right, I'm in tabular editor three. I initiated that through the external tools ribbon and that's where uh, I have it installed and I just opened that particular application. Now, we'll start to create calculation groups. What do you do? You come to the tables right here, right click and say that you would like to create a new calculation group. You can alternatively also use the shortcut Alt seven. I make one, I give it a name. Let's just call this as time Intel calculations, calcs, that's fine. And now, uh, every single calculation group is going to have different calculation items, which are nothing but the actual calculations that you're trying to create. Remember that we were trying to create two calculations, one for YTD and uh, the other one for last year value. Now, these are going to be placeholder calculations. That means they are not going to be hard coded to a particular measure, but instead they will work with any measure. Let's just try to do that. I'm going to right click on the calculation group created and I'll say create a calculation item. Let's just give this calculation item a name. I'm going to call this as let's say uh, byte D and I'm going to create another one as uh, my uh, last year number. Okay. Now, once you have created a blank calculation item, let's just go write a formula in that, uh, which is going to calculate the YTD. So remember that the way that we wrote the formula for calculating YTD, I'm going to use the same formula, which is nothing but the total YTD function. But in that particular function, rather than actually specifying my total sales measure, I'm going to say, hey, pick up whatever measure that the pivot table or any visual is displaying. How do I do that? There is a placeholder type calculation or DAX measure available, which is called as selected uh, measure, selected measure. Now, once you write selected measure, this is nothing but the measure which is in the current filter context, which is being run in the visual. So, so on the selected measure, I would like to take a total of the YTD and the other part of YTD is nothing but specifying your calendar date. That's it, done. Uh, I will create the last year now. So I'm going to use something like a calculate and in calculate, I will specify on the selected measure. And then I'm going to say this is for the same period last year. This is good. And of course, in same period last year, I have to also mention the date, uh, close that, save that. Now it asks you, Hey, do you want to save changes to your calculation groups? Sure enough, we would like to save the changes. Once you save the changes to the calculation group, you can see that at the back, Power BI is now asking for a refresh. This refresh is only going to be limited to the table that we have just created, which is the calculation group table. So if I now hit a refresh, you're going to see that we now have a time intelligence calculation group. Now note, let's just bring back the total sales to our uh, pivot table. So I'm going to get rid of this, bring back my total sales. And now I have year, month and total sales. Let's just take a look at this particular calculation group and put that in the uh, columns of the pivot table. And you can see that now what we have been able to do is we have been able to get a YTD and we have been able to get the sales of the last year automatically created. But the problem here is that we are able to take a look at the YTD and the last year, but we aren't able to take a look at the total sales itself. So we would want a calculation that displays the very number that was dragged in the pivot table in the first place. That means if I have dragged total sales in the pivot table, I should also be able to take a look at the native total sales calculation apart from the YTD and the last year. So let's just go modify the calculation group. All right, back in tabular editor and I'm going to create another calculation item, which is where I will say that I don't really want to perform YTD or the last year calculation, I just want to display whatever measure as it is. So I will create a new calculation item, uh, create a new calculation item. This calculation item is going to be the current year value or the current value. Just going to write, well, let's say value here, right? And in the value, the DAX that I'm going to write is the selected measure, right? That's all about it. I click on save and you can see that it's asking for a refresh again. So I refresh that now and you can see that we have the value. We have the last year value and the YTT value. Another thing that you're going to find odd, or maybe you have a preference is that maybe you'd like to show the value first, the last year as the second position and YTD as the third position. Now, how can you actually do that? You just have to change the order in which the calculation items are appearing in tabular editor. So go back to tabular editor and you can see that the first one is last year. I would want to replace that with the value. So I just move the value up and bring the last year value to the second position. 
and that's done. So value first, last year second, and the YTD third. I hit the save and come back in my Power BI, do a refresh, and that's how the calculation group appears. Now, so far, the calculation group and the items that we have been cre that we have created is only applicable to one calculation, which is nothing but the total sales right here. So you can see that this is the total sales calculation and the calculation group is just working on this particular total sales. Now, what if I wanted to create the same last year YTD for another measure, maybe the uh, commission measure. So what I can actually do is I can actually drag my commission me measure inside my pivot table and what you're going to see that I now have it for commission as well. So the three calculations, which is the total sales commission uh, sorry, the value is there for total sales and commission and the last year number is also there for total sales and commission and the YTD is also there for total sales and commission. So without being able to create multiple measures, we have been able to reduce the number of measures for as many calculations as we would want because we have built a placeholder calculation that is going to serve the purpose and we can create more placeholders if you like. All right, before we move to the next topic, which is the precedence of the calculation group, I quickly wanted to show you that how do calculation groups look like once they are created in Power BI. So take a look at this particular calculation group that we just created, which is time intelligence calculation. We have just two columns, name and the ordinal, and these are the two columns that we can see it right here. Note that you cannot see the DAX anywhere that you have written in tabular editor. All that you see is the name of the calculation group, which is YTD last year and the value. And you can also see the ordinal. Now, if you take a look at the ordinal, the ordinal simply means the serial number of this particular calculation group. So value is the least. So it appears first in whenever you kind of drag it. Uh, and last year appears second and YTD appears third because that is the way the ascending order works. Now, in case you would want to edit any of these calculations, you will have to go back to the tabular editor and edit your calculations out over there. Now, whatever DAX that you write in the calculation group as a calculation item in tabular editor has the ability to override your actual measure calculation. So if you actually come right here and take a look in this particular calculation, we just dragged total sales right here. In total sales, if I just drag the calculation group, which is my time intelligence, put that name column right here, the calculation group items, which is the calculation items, have the ability to override whatever DAX that we have written right here and apply what you wrote in the tabular editor while creating the calculation group. So please note on that. Now let's just actually get started with calculation group precedence. All right. To be able to understand calculation group precedence, we'll have to understand that what's going to happen in the mind of Power BI in case there are multiple calculation groups in Power BI. So it's not the case that you're only going to create one calculation group once you start to work actively with, with it. You're going to create many, many calculation groups. Now, in case there is a clash between two calculation groups, which of the calculation group is going to preced have precedence over the other? This topic is about calculation group precedence. So, what I have been able to do so far is that I have created two more calculation groups. One is the add calculation group. So I just right clicked and I say new calculation group and I gave it a name as add. In that particular calculation group, I just created one calculation item, which is the add calculation item. Now, if you take a look at this, the DAX is ridiculously simple. I'm just arbitrarily adding 1000 to the measure that is dragged in the pivot table. Nothing that complicated, right? Just adding 1000 to it. I created another calculation group, which is the divide calculation group. And I'm just like dividing the current measure, whichever is there in the pivot table by two. That's all that I'm doing. Now, once these two calculation groups are created, I save it. And these two calculation groups, I can see it in my model right here. So this is the add and this is the divide calculation group. Now with this particular name column, which shows the name of the calculation item, in our case, we have add and divide. I drag these two name columns to create two slicers. So take a look, this name column is linked with the slicer right here, and you can see the add item right here. And this particular name column is linked with the slicer right here, and you can take a look at the divide one. Now, I have uh, been able to do it, and you can see that in my pivot table, we have the year, the month, and the total sales. Now, let me just click on the add item, and because the current measure is total sales, 
and in the add calculation item I said that whatever measure you see please add 1000 into that so if I now click on add the current sales are about 1200 1199 if I add 1000 to that it's going to be 2199 so if I do that 2199 in fact all the sales have 1000 added to that now, if I maybe uncheck that and if I click on divide, you can see that uh, we have uh, the divide uh, running right here and the sales that was there now is divided by two. But what if I tend to do both? I click on add and I click on divide. This is the number that I get. How are you going to make sense of this particular number? Now, this particular number is arrived by something called as calculation group precedence. And to be able to explain that, I'll have to take you to tabular editor once again. All right. In tabular editor, what you're going to see at the calculation group level, not the uh, calculation item level, but at the calculation group level, you're going to see a number which says calculation group present. Note that the number here is one. And if I take a look at the divide, the number here is two. Let's just go write these numbers against the calculation group. So this is one and this is two, right? What this actually means is that if both the calculation groups are active, then in that scenario, this calculation group will happen in the first order and this calculation group will happen in the second order. That means this gets the precedence over this one because this is first and this is second. So this will happen to first and this will happen the second. Now let's just try to run the numbers in Excel and try to validate this particular calculation that is this particular calculation right in the first place or not. All right, our original number was, uh, I guess, 1199.3. And like I said, uh, the calculation group here is the first precedence. That means this is going to happen first and this is going to happen second. So what was the first one? The first thing is that this particular number gets added by a thousand. So I just take this number plus 1000 to that. And that's the answer that I get. Now, if I half this number, this is the number that I should get. So if I just take this very number, divide that by two, this is the number that I see right here here and the answer actually matches. So calculation group precedence is of extreme importance. If you're creating multiple calculation groups within your model, you should also pay attention to what is the precedence number of the calculation group, because that is going to meaningfully impact the output of the calculations that you're trying to build in your calculation group items. All right, the last topic, which is called sideways recursion. Now, I wouldn't be able to explain this very clearly unless I actually bring you a specific example. Now, please take a look at our existing calculation group. We are displaying the sales value, whatever value of the sales that we have. We are displaying the last year number and also the YTD number. Maybe we'd like to enhance our calculation group by adding one more calculation, which is the growth over last year, which is the percentage growth uh, compared to the current year versus the last year. That's what we would like to add. Let's try to create another calculation item in the existing calculation group that we have created. So I'll jump back to tabular editor and start to create one more calculation item. So if I just right click on the calculation items right here, say that I'd like to create a new calculation item. I'd like to give this particular calculation item a name, which is let's say Y O Y percentage growth. I put that as a uh, calculation item and I start writing a formula. Now, in order for me to calculate the last year, I need two things. I need the numerator, which is the current period sales or whatever measure. And I need the last year's value. And I can actually get that in two ways. So I can actually write something like uh, divide. And I can say something like the selected measure. That's the current year number. And I can say something like calculate. And I can say selected measure. But this is going to be for same period last year. And this is calendar date. Now, this particular division of the current year versus last year minus one is going to give me the growth percentage. Fair enough. But guess what? This particular same period last year is something that we have already created in our calculation group in the last year calculation item. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to follow sideways recursion. That means that in this particular calculation group, which is the YOY growth percentage, I'm going to reference one of the existing calculation items that I have already created. That means I will call this particular calculation item, right? How do we do that? It's very, very simple. All that I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, calculate the selected measure. But instead of again calculating same period last year, I will actually refer back to this particular last year. What do I do? I actually come here and I say something like, uh, I'm trying to refer to the time intelligence calculation group and the name of the column is name because the name column contains all the names of the calculation items. So I'm just going to say time 
Intel Calc's name and in this particular name I am referring to the name which is last year. So last year, uh, close the bracket, press enter and of course uh, minus one in the end. If I now commit to this particular function, what I have done is I have actually referred to one of the existing calculated items in of another calculated item. This concept is called sideways recursion. So if I save it, it asks me for a refresh once again. And you can see that we have now a YOI percentage. Most of the numbers actually error out because we don't really have the previous year's numbers. So we'll have to fix the calculation a bit. But you can see that right here, this absolutely gives us the right number. Now, a couple of problems. We don't really have like a negative one here. The, the growth should not be calculated for these items. It should only be calculated for the relevant items. And most importantly, this should be a percentage. So let's just go fix this and we'll actually close on this. All right, while you were gone, I uh, created a fix for the calculation and my calculation appears slightly different, but it's essentially doing the very same thing. What I have been able to do is create two very simple variables, one for the current year, referring to the selected measure, which is whatever measure is the pivot table displaying. And then another calculation for last year, which is where I'm doing a sideways recursion to call the last year calculation item. And then if both the current year number and the last year numbers are present, that means they are not blank, then I carry out my divide calculation minus one. Now, one interesting thing that you're going to see, although the numbers are appearing correct, that you're going to see that all the numbers are in percentages. Now, remember that you saw a, just a two columnar table in Power BI, which is where you had the name column and the ordinal column. There was no place to set the format string of any particular calculation item because that is also a part of nothing but uh, tabular editor. So what you do is you pick up that calculation item that you have created in our case that's YOY and you go over to the format string right here and set the format string right here in the inverted commas. You set the string and that particular string appears like the way that you would want it to be. That's all. All right. If you've seen me up until the end, I hope you like this one. Uh, in case you have any questions on calculation groups, I try to cover them with utmost basics. I hope you understand that now. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them down in the comments below and I'd be glad to reply. In the end, I'd like to give a quick shout out about my tax and my Power Query courses on Power BI. In case you're getting started and getting stuck with any of the conceptual level understanding of how DAX or Power Query works, to be able to solve simple and get to more sophisticated level of problem solving, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be highly beneficial. Thanks so much.